Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Today's video is sponsored by Amazon Audible. As usual you can start listening with a free 30 day Audible trial and get full access to thousands and thousands of all you can listen audiobooks, original entertainment and podcasts included in the Plus catalogue. Just visit audible.com slash jingles or text jingles to 500 500. As usual, I do like to recommend something that you can get with your free Audible credit for taking up this offer, and this time it's going to be Japanese Destroyer Captain by Captain Tamaichi Hara. It's a highly regarded war memoir, which was a bestseller in both Japan and the USA during the 1960s, and it's long been treasured by historians for its insights into the Japanese side of the surface war in the Pacific. Captain Hara was a survivor of more than 100 sorties against the Allies and was known throughout Japan as the unsinkable captain. I have no hesitation whatsoever in recommending this audiobook, and remember you can get this and one free audiobook every month with your monthly credit just by visiting audible.com slash jingles or texting jingles to 500 500. Now today's battle is a bit of a first because it's the first time I've featured any of the new Dutch cruisers and there's probably a good reason for that. But this is the tier 10, the Golden Lion, and it's been captained for us today by Bottle Sheep. I don't think he's actually Dutch himself, although he might be, but this is a North American server battle, so the chances are that he's not actually a Dutch citizen, but I strongly suspect that he may be at least of Dutch descent, and there's a couple of things that lead me to believe that. Not just because he's playing a Dutch cruiser, although he has obviously ground his way to the Dutch tier 10, but also, well, for a start, the clan that he's in is called PSV, which I believe is probably a reference to the famous Dutch football team, PSV Eindhoven. They're currently leading the Dutch Football League, by the way, for anybody who cares. But it's also the name, Bottle Sheep. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But, well, the Dutch have a way of saying things, or associating words with each other that make perfect sense in Dutch, but when you translate them literally into English, they just seem a little strange and, well... Dutch. Like his name, for example, Bottle Sheep. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It makes literal sense, but it's just a little weird and, well, kind of Dutch. <laughs> and it's entirely possible that he is of Dutch descent. I mean, there were a lot of Dutch colonies in what would eventually become the United States of America. And a lot of people in America trace their lineage all the way back to the Netherlands. New York City, for example, was called New Amsterdam before it was called New York City. So let's just say it wouldn't surprise me if Bottle Sheep did in fact have more than a little bit of the cloggy in him, if he was a big fan of tulips and windmills. I could be wrong, of course. <laughs> I'm only speculating here. But let's just say if his surname actually turned out to be Van Leeuwen or something like that, I really wouldn't be surprised. Anyway. Get on with this battle, so obviously a tier 10 battle. And the first time I've featured a Dutch cruiser, despite the fact that they've been out for some time now. And I think the reason for that is, well I don't want to say they're not very good, but they're not very good. I mean the Golden Lion's a decent tier 10, it's certainly got a lot going for it, but the ships leading up to it are somewhat lacking, particularly the incredibly anemic tier 9, the Johan de Witt. And I think the reason for that is that the ships were, let's say, over-nerfed in order to compensate for the perceived effectiveness of... Ooh, hang on a second. That was painful. And so was that. Yet, yeah, Bottle Sheep did tell me in the email that accompanied this replay that he made a fairly critical error of judgement early on in this battle that cost him a lot of his health, and I think that was probably it. So from here on in, he's going to have to be rather careful. But anyway... Dutch cruisers, and that airstrike consumable, which of course is the unique toy that the Dutch cruisers bring to the party. I'm not entirely sure why Wargaming thought that Dutch cruisers should have an airstrike consumable. The only notable Dutch naval action of World War II that I can remember, and I stand ready to be corrected here, but that would have been the Battle of the Java Sea, where the Abda force, commanded by Dutch Rear Admiral Carol Durman, who was killed during the battle, um, it was a multinational force, it wasn't just Dutch ships, but it was an utter disaster for the Allies. And most of the battle took place completely outside of the reach of friendly air cover, so why the Dutch cruisers should get an airstrike consumable is... Hmm, yeah, 
well, whatever, because of reasons, I guess. But an airstrike consumable is what they have. And I think it was this airstrike consumable's effectiveness, or perceived effectiveness, that led to the rest of the ships to which they're attached being slightly over-nerfed. Does everybody remember there was a fairly famous clip going around while these ships were in test of a cruiser? I can't remember what it was, but it was parked behind an island and it got hit by multiple airstrikes from multiple golden lions and it got absolutely nuked, like full health to nothing in two seconds flat. And everybody watched this and said, oh my god, this airstrike is stupidly overpowered. You can see bottle sheet prepping up an airstrike on this reversing key here. You get multiple drops with each airstrike, it takes time for them to get there. Lots and lots of time for the enemy target to get out of the drop zone. As long as they're not stationary. And that is why the cruiser in the clip that I was talking about got utterly nuked. Because he took airstrikes from three different golden lions at the same time. So in effect, nine drops. And he wasn't moving, so almost all of the bombs hit him. Under those circumstances, it's completely understandable that he got completely nuked. But of course, everybody saw this clip, and they lost their minds. And I did say at the time, and oh, nice shot, sir. Well done. <laughs> Devastating strike on the uh, Des Moines there. That's uh, one radar less for the enemy team. Good. But I did say at the time that we might have been overreacting. You know, I was a bit cautious that we might have been looking at the perfect storm of perfect circumstances that resulted in something that the airstrike was not going to be able to do on demand and that does in fact turn out to have been the case because the airstrike consumable is useful under certain very specific circumstances. It is absolutely not the instant damage on demand ability that everybody seemed to think it was before these ships went live and I think Wargaming may have just taken some of that feedback on board a little more than they should have. Because while the Golden Lion is a perfectly good ship, and the Tier 4 and the Tier 5 aren't bad, the rest of the ships are just a kind of bit wishy-washy, and I think they've been over-nerfed to compensate for how good everybody thought this airstrike was going to be. And unfortunately, it isn't. The Golden Lion is pretty good though. I mean, it's heavily armoured for a cruiser. And it has big guns for a cruiser, although they're not the biggest cruiser guns available in the game. These are 283mm guns. Actually, it's a lot like a it's a lot like a tier 10 Scharnhorst, because the Scharnhorst has the same calibre guns, it has the same number of guns, and where the Golden Lion is heavily armoured for a cruiser, the Scharnhorst is lightly armoured for a battleship, and a tier 10 Scharnhorst is no bad thing. Of course the Golden Lion doesn't have the torpedoes that the Scharnhorst does, but the Scharnhorst doesn't have the airstrike that the Golden Lion does, so yeah, I think a tier 10 Scharnhorst, if you're struggling to think of how to imagine the Golden Lion, that's uh, a pretty good description. The armour-piercing penetration on these 283mm guns is good. The high explosive and armour-piercing shell damage is also very good. She has a very heavily armoured bow, midsection and citadel, although she does only have a 25mm stern, which will be overmatched by 16-inch armour-piercing shells. She's also a lot sneakier than you'd imagine she could be. I think it's fairly safe to say that this ship has battlecruiser guns and armour, but she's got light cruiser stealth and mobility, and that's a very, very potent combination. She also has pretty good anti-aircraft firepower, and that's backed up by the defensive fire consumable. And of course, in this particular battle, the fact that the enemy carriers are only tier 8, I believe both teams have a Lexington, uh, that doesn't hurt either. She has a very, very short cooldown on her heel. It's only 40 seconds, although this is somewhat offset by the fact that unlike on other cruisers, when you set the Golden Line on fire, it doesn't just burn for 30 seconds, it burns for 60, like a battleship. What this combination of factors means is that you've got an extremely heavy cruiser, ideally suited to holding down choke points, smacking the enemy in the nose with those 283mm guns when they poke it out, and hitting them with the airstrike when they drop back into cover. It's also very good at kiting with a superior speed, particularly against enemy battleships of 33.5 knots, and that light cruiser level of concealment. The only thing that the Golden Lion is not particularly well suited for is your standard stand-up, knock-down, drag-out gunfight, where the subpar DPM of these 283mm guns really doesn't do the ship any favours. I think it's at this point where I should stop talking about the ship itself and start talking about the battle because things have just reached a fairly critical juncture. 
we're at a point in the game where things are both going incredibly well and incredibly badly for Bottle Sheep's team at the same time. We have a classic example of a team trying to win way, way harder than they need to. Bottle Sheep's team had all three of the caps, although they're about to lose one of them. And taking those three caps has cost them six ships, and they've only just picked up their third kill. Remy Alabama, despite Bottle Sheep urging him not to, left cover to try to claim a kill on the low health enemy Missouri who ended up being killed by the Thunderer much further back and in a much better position anyway that cost the Alabama his life bottle rocket kiting away manages to get a great kill with these hard hitting armor piercing shells on an enemy Mosfer but you can see what the team are doing they were in a position well they still are in a position where they have most of the caps but they don't have the numbers Instead of pushing forward and trying to win harder than they already are, they should be holding on to those caps. There's plenty of island cover here. You saw how effective Bottle Sheep could be using the island cover and taking shots at, for example, the Moskva as it tried to push forward and take those caps off them. This is the advantage of having the caps. You can afford to just sit tight and wait for the enemy to make the mistakes because they have to if they want to win. You've got all of the caps. Instead, the team kept pushing forward when they didn't need to, kept trying to win harder than they needed to, and it's cost them seven ships. Ships that they could ill afford to lose when playing defensively, which is what they should be doing, it's what Bottle Sheep has been doing, and it's what the Thunderer and the Richelieu appear to be doing. The Benson's still forward, but well, he's a destroyer, he's not currently being spotted or threatened by aircraft, and I think he's trying to reacquire that Asashio as a target. Which is risky, because the Asashio will outspot him, but, well, when three of the five ships remaining on your team can all be hit by the Asashio's deep water torpedoes, that Asashio is a significant threat. So we'll give the Benson the benefit of the doubt for now. But it's funny how you notice the guys on the team who are playing defensively, which is the way that you should play when you have the cap advantage, are the ones who are still alive. It's funny that, isn't it? And judging by those torpedoes and the fact that the central cap at Bravo has just been flipped, I think we can take a reasonable guess as to where the enemy Shimakaze probably is. And it's here where Bottle Sheep is going to have to put the, for a cruiser, extreme tankiness of the Golden Lion to the test. Unfortunately, while the Golden Lion is good at kiting, although not as good as a Zhao or a Hindenburg, it does have good armour. And it is pretty quick and stealthy. The 25mm of stern plating are definitely going to be an issue here. So he's going to want to get that thing turned around. Only this time, unlike at the beginning of the battle when he did it in open water and got his broadside bitch slapped as a result, he's executing that turn while there's an island blocking line of fire between himself and, well, at the moment, the only ship we can see is the Republic over there, but we know that there's more than just the Republic. But now he's managed to execute the turn, the moment of greatest exposure, and did it with the island up ahead, blocking enemy line of fire. And he's got that 40mm icebreaker bow, which doesn't make him immune to fire, but it does make him immune to citadels from the front. Even if that had been a Yamato shooting at him, the icebreaker bow would have taken it. He's still capable of taking AP damage to the superstructure, and he is going to continue taking AP damage to the superstructure, but right now, the Azuma on his flank initially appeared to be the bigger threat, which is why he switched fire and scored multiple citadels, but the Azuma, and the Asashio has just been spotted as well, is completely ignoring him. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. When you have the caps and you're forced to play defensively, you wait for the enemy team to make the mistakes, which is exactly what the Azuma is doing. The Azuma could have ended him right now, but for some bizarre reason, is completely ignoring him. Well, fine. It's his funeral. And of course, Bottle Sheep pushing forward. Oh, there's the Confederate award. Nicely done. Because he doesn't want to fight more than one ship at the same time. Which is why he pushed forward, which seems counterintuitive when you're supposed to be defending, but he's reduced the number of enemy ships that can actually shoot at him. I mean, the Republic can't. He's on the far side of an island. He is still getting spammed by Hindenburg High Explosive. And Hindenburg High Explosive is nasty. And it has managed to knock him down to less than 10,000 health, and here comes the Lexington. But here's the thing. The Golden Lion's AA is actually pretty good. It's pretty good in a way that American AA used to be pretty good prior to the carrier rework, and now isn't, because American AA 
which used to be the terror of any kind of aircraft, mostly relies on those dual-purpose 5-inch guns, which basically just generate long-range AA flak bursts, which are a bit hit and miss, and can be dodged. But the Golden Lion's AA is particularly strong in its mid-range continuous damage aura. Meanwhile, Bottle Sheep, not only continuing to manoeuvre so that he never has to fight more than one ship at a time, but also scooping up the AA Defence Expert medal and preventing the enemy team from gaining any further points from this central cap. I mean, I'm sure he'd prefer to flip it, but that's not going to happen while there's another enemy ship inside this cap circle on the far side of that island over there. At this point, they're just playing for time. And remember, even if you don't flip a cap circle, just your presence inside it prevents the enemy team from gaining any points from it. They are going to have to flip a cap, or, and it's looking increasingly unlikely, sink everything on the enemy team in order to win this match. Because they are 200 points ahead, but with no caps and no kills, they're not going any further than their current 865 points. Oh, nice. The Thunderer did just get the Shimakaze, and the Asashio is being spotted by the Lexington, so... Shimakaze down, Asashio spotted, that's going to be a great relief to everybody. They are still just playing for time though. Four minutes of this game left. They do have a good points lead, but they've got no points coming in unless they can keep killing things. And the enemy team do have points coming in because they still hold two of the caps, and well, Bottle Sheep doesn't have a lot of health left. And the, uh, the Richelieu down there only has 2,000 health. <laughs> it's not looking good, is it? Bottle Sheep definitely doesn't want to get into a gunfight with the North Carolina at this point, not with his 25mm stern sticking out. That would hurt. So he's using the airstrike. I think he was probably hoping to set a fire there. But it didn't happen. Here comes the Lexington again. So they know where he is, but, well, Bottle Sheep's careful manoeuvring. And those are probably Hindenburg torpedoes. Bottle Sheep's careful manoeuvring is ensuring that nobody can actually shoot at him and finish him off, and he's still contesting this central cap and preventing the enemy team from getting any points from it. He's probably going to have to fight that Hindenburg now, though, whether he wants to or not. Now, he's angled. The Hindenburg is not. Unfortunately, the Hindenburg, thanks to its turtle back, is particularly difficult to citadel, even if it's given you a broadside at point-blank range. Fortunately, the Golden Lion has a 25mm turtle back as well. Neither of these guys look like they can afford to take one more salvo, and... Ah, nice! He's managed to get the shots off right before he died. That was a points-neutral exchange. One tier 10 cruiser for another tier 10 cruiser. And the Thunderer managed to clean up the North Carolina as well, which has put them... Well, for the moment at least, further ahead on points, but the Asashio's managed to get way too close to the Lexington. So, we're almost certainly about to lose the Lexington. However, look at what the Richelieu is doing. He's flipping Alpha. 2,050 health he may have, which means that he's basically out of heals. But he's managed to get past the Asashio without being sunk. And he's just flipped Alpha, so the team now actually have more points coming in. The Asashio got the Lexington, yeah, but he's way too far out of position to be any immediate threat to, well, certainly not the Thunderer, and at the moment, not even the Richelieu. The Thunderer still has plenty of health. And... The best move for the Asashio right now would be to head up to Alpha, and if not flip it, then at least contest it and prevent Bottle Sheep's team from getting any further points from it, and potentially also sink that Richelieu. But even if he does do that, the Thunderer doesn't have anything to fear other than the Carrier, because the Carrier is running severely low on aircraft right now. He's not able to continue putting full squadrons up, mostly because he basically gave Bottle Sheep a free Air Defense Expert award. Plus, the Thunderer, because he's not stupid, is heading not just away from the Asashio, but into Cap Circle Bravo, which is going to further reduce the number of points that the enemy team are accruing, and basically remove any chance, unless they can get some kills, that they're going to catch up on points. The enemy Lexington continues to throw aircraft away pointlessly on a target that he has absolutely no chance whatsoever of sinking, instead of going for the Richelieu, which isn't going to be hard to spot, he's a battleship after all, and which the carrier might be able to sink because he only has 2,000 health remaining. The Richelieu, meanwhile, is also heading for the central cap. The Asashio is in pursuit, but there's no way he's going to be able to get any torpedoes away as the Richelieu ducks into island cover. 
this, with less than a minute remaining, has been an extremely well-played game, not just from Bottle Sheep, but from Willy Hornblower here in the Richelieu, and Dark Lord 70 up there in the Thunderer. Three guys who, recognising that they didn't need to win any harder than they already were, played this battle the way it should have been played, and didn't do what the rest of their team did, and just rushed forward, desperately trying to chase down kills that they didn't need, and giving the enemy team free bonus points that they absolutely couldn't afford to give them. I only really have one question for you all as a result of this battle. Towards the end of the battle, the captain of the enemy, Asashio, said in chat, Kill the mustard ship. What's a mustard ship? <laughs> I've never heard that one before. Is this some North American server joke that us EU server plebs don't get? <laughs> Seriously. I'm curious. If anybody knows the answer, do let me know in the comments. In the meantime, congratulations and extremely well played. Not just a bottle sheep in the Golden Lion, but also Dark Lord 70 in the Thunderer, and particularly Willy Hornblower in the Richelieu, a tier 8 battleship in a tier 10 battle, who managed to survive by the skin of his teeth and was instrumental in turning this result around, as the rest of the team around these three guys were desperately trying to win harder than they needed to. Hope you enjoyed today's battle, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.